Lord, I discourage those that are feeling down this morning. Lord, I pray for faith to arise, Lord. I pray, Lord, for encouragement to come, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you come, Lord, and, and, and lead us by your spirit this morning. Yes, we Jesus. thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll praise you with all of my heart. And I will praise you with all of my strength.
coming back again. He's seated on the throne. Hallelujah. We can look to him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 you this morning. I want to encourage you. You know, when we come in the presence of the Lord, we are not singing to each other. I always say this, it's like, it's like a song now. But the reality is that when we come in the presence of the Lord, we are before the Lord. Hey, each one of us. We, you are not with the heart. The Lord, we are just, we are just, you know, we just, we are, hey, that's what they say in the belly. But the reality is that, brothers and sisters, the Lord is here, the Lord is here, and each one of us, we need to feel that in our hearts. Hey, if you are not feeling that, feeling that, I pray that you feel that in your heart, that Jesus is here, and nothing takes him by surprise. Nothing takes him by surprise. Hey, he know the very hair that, the hair that is in your head. Hey. It's amazing, hey? It's amazing when you think about it. But today, let us come and, 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 and expecting the Lord to speak to us. Hearts are turning to you. We turn to you. We turn to you. Hope is staring. Hope is staring. And hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, in your presence, all our fear. You are the God who saved us, worthy of all our praise.
yo yo tua ye no kuluna i yo yo tua
Yes, Jesus, we bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Karia la 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 ba, kasebiria la 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 ba. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. Karia la 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 ba, kasebiria la 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 ba. Iria la 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 ba. Iria la 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 ba, kasebiria la 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 ba.
Your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all, oh God. We lift our voices to you, oh God. Thank you for the price you paid, oh God. Thank you for salvation, oh God.
Yes, Lord, it's clear that your presence are here this morning. It's undeniable, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can come into your presence as a free people. And I pray, Lord, that the words that proceeded out of our mouth and the melodies that came from our heart this morning, Lord, was a sweet sacrifice unto Thee. That it wasn't religion. That it wasn't just what we do on a Sunday morning, Lord. But that it truly came from a heart that wanted to worship You this morning, Lord. In honor of and in truth, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So I have given the, been given the task to do the offering this morning. And uh, if, if uh, the leadership will grant me just a few minutes this morning, the Lord has put something on my heart. And... Um, if it's wrong, you're welcome to rebuke me later. <laughs> but I want to start with reading from Hebrews. It says, uh, Hebrews, what are we? Hebrews 4, verse 16, uh, 14. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So I want to do a little uh, picture this morning. So I'm going to need somebody that is quite tall and a little bit wider than what I am. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> okay, my husband has volunteered. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> um, when I was... Uh, my days of a lecturer and teaching anatomy and physiology, uh, I had to explain to students when we talked about, you know, when we have an injury, when we have a pain in our back, like unfortunately our dear brother Rudy, Rudy has this morning, why does when we put heat and cold on that area, or we have a sore knee, and we put a heat or a cold pack on there, why does it help with the pain? And it works like this. If you can imagine that the area back there where the camera is, is our brain. And this uh, whole, this walkway here is our spinal cord, okay? Now, let's say I 
and the pain impulse that is coming from, let's say, the knee, all right? So I'm over here, I'm on the knee, the pain impulse travels, it travels quite slowly, it gets to the spinal cord, and now the brain over there sees the pain impulse, and we experience pain. Are you with me? But now, when we apply heat or cold to that knee, Dave is the heat or the cold pack. The impulse, the heat impulse or the cold impulse. That impulse travels faster along the nerves to the spinal cord. All right? So the pain impulse, I'm over here, I'm the pain impulse. He's the cold impulse. We are both traveling towards the spinal cord. All right? Travel towards the spinal cord. But now because he's faster... He gets to the spinal cord first, right? And now what does the brain see? The heat or the cold impulse. And now we don't experience pain anymore. We just feel the heat of the, and the cold, and therefore we start to feel better. Okay? You're with me. Now, <laughs> I have a point. <laughs> Trust me. And it's something that hit me again yesterday when I was listening to a few worship songs and old hymns. There is a song that says that because Jesus died, God looks upon Jesus and he doesn't look upon me. So now if you can imagine, God is over there. Okay, let's say God is over there by the camera. Okay, I'm living here in my sin. Dave has the wonderful task of being Jesus. Okay, stand a little bit further away. I get born. I get born into sin. I live my life in sin. I have attitudes with my parents. Hmm? I have issues with my friends at school. I steal a rubber here and there because, ah, what does it matter? Hmm? Then I grow older, more sin. I get addicted to pornography. Hmm? All the things, ah, <laughs> I live in sin. I live in sin. But I can't save myself. So when I walk on this pathway, wait, 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 wait. I walk on this pathway. There is God. What does he see? He sees my sin. Because I cannot help myself. But God saw that. And he made a plan. He had a plan, right? And so I'm in my sin. I want to be set free, but I can't be set free. I walk, I walk. God just sees my sin. No ways for me to be set free, to be righteous before God. Now what does he do? He sends his son to experience everything that I am experiencing, yet without sinning in it. He's experiencing exactly what I'm experiencing, but he doesn't sin in it. And so now we walk on this road. He walk on this road, and I get to the point where I realize I can't help myself. And I call out to God, and I say, God, help me. I cannot save myself. And God says, it's okay. I have a plan. Accept my son, Jesus Christ. Now we walk on the road. I accept Jesus as my Savior. Now what does God see? He sees Jesus. Thank you. He sees Jesus. He doesn't look upon my sin. He sees the righteousness of Jesus that can save me like nothing else can save me. And so you're going to ask me, so what does that have to do with offering? I'm not sure myself. <laughs> but what I do know is that the verse that came to my heart this morning is that, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And you will notice it doesn't say to help me in time of need. It says to help in time of need. And so this morning, I have a gratitude in my heart that when I'm standing here 
Jesus isn't, uh, God isn't looking upon my sin. But because I'm a child of God, and yes, I have my issues, and I still have my struggles in life, He looks upon Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful about that this morning. Because otherwise, I know that I would have been very, very far in this world this morning. And so, as we come with our offering today, I want you to reflect on that. That Jesus is the one that is taking all your sin. That's why he died on the cross. So that you and I can come boldly to this throne of grace where we obtain mercy. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to reflect on that this morning. Because today might be the day that God is calling you to say, I am here for you, so that God doesn't look upon your sin, but He looks upon Jesus. Today might be your day. Today might be your day. So whether you are coming saved, giving to the Lord, whether you are coming unsaved, the Lord has a plan for your life. And it might be your time today. So, Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord. And, Lord, our hearts cannot express the gratitude that we feel this morning because of the price that you have paid so that God can look upon me with righteousness. And words cannot express our joy because of that, that we are a free people that can come boldly to your throne of grace this morning. And Lord, as we bring of our offering, we know, Lord, that it doesn't mean anything in the physical. It's money, Lord Jesus. But in the spirit, it's a symbol of us giving our lives to you this morning because we know that is where our salvation lies. And we thank you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. So there's a basket at the back, in the front. The details will be on the board. There's a swipe machine. Let's give boldly. Let's give boldly as we come to the throne of grace. Amen. The grace of God upon my life is no dependent upon me. has been given to me which has been given unto me because of his love his love for me it is unending it is unending unfailing
given unto me. Morning, church. I was trying to give Steve a chance to finish, but he's not finishing, so I'll continue. Wonderful that we can be together this morning in the presence of the Lord. It's amazing just to, for me anyway, to be able to feel the heart of the Lord. You know, I know many of you know that I use this expression, oh Lord, feel the heart of the Lord. But for me, feeling the heart of the Lord means me knowing his grace for my life, me knowing his plan for my life, me being able to feel the direction of the Lord for my life, where I know I can be who I am, I can be where I am, but one thing that I'm assured of is the Lord has a plan for my life. And he is at work in me to accomplish something that will give him glory. Something that does not begin with me. Something that does not end with me. Something that has its origins with him. And as I am, I'm just who I am. And the Lord himself, as I open my heart and as I open my life, he will be faithful to do that work, which he himself knows what work it is. It is not something that I can say, Lord, this or that, but he himself knows what it is. And he calls me to just have faith in him. And as I have faith in him, he leads and he directs. And for me, that is the heart of the Lord for me and the heart of the Lord for you. And we can rest assured in the Lord that he will accomplish that which he has begun. Amen. So as we sit here, let us be encouraged. Let us look ahead and look forward to all that the Lord has for us. In the midst of everything that we are facing, we are going through, but in our hearts, let us carry that hope, let us carry that faith, that the Lord will be faithful till the end. Amen. So we're going to go through the announcements for the week. But before I do that, I want to take this chance to welcome everyone who is here with us in the building for the first time on a Sunday service. If it is your first time, please show with a raise of your hand, and we just want to welcome you. Welcome to Harvest Christian Church. Please keep your hand up. We're going to give you a little gift just to welcome you. It's a joy that you can be here with us. It's a joy for us. And after the service, do stay around for a cup of tea so we can get to know you a bit more, so we can introduce ourselves. Amen. So welcome. And for those who are joining us on live stream, welcome. It's a joy that we can be together in the presence of the Lord. And so this Tuesday at 6 a.m., we're going to have our prayer meeting on Zoom. So let us come, let us be together, let us trust the Lord for our lives, let us trust the Lord for all that he wants to do. Amen. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have our connect groups at the two homes, one being the Bobber's house, which is my house here in Block 9, so, and the other one being at the Charama's house in Extension 2. So please make that time make the time. It will never be there. Make the time and come. Let us be together. Let us fellowship together. Let us be able to feel from one another what the Lord is doing to be encouraged of one another. Amen. You know, sometimes the preacher comes and stands here and he preaches and we, we hear what the Lord has and it's amazing. But you know, in our lives, we face different situations and we go through different things and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but many a times when 
I meet a brother or a sister who has walked through a situation that I'm going through and they are able to testify of the faithfulness of the Lord in their lives. It encourages me. I'm able to see beyond my situation. I'm able to see beyond my need. And for me, that is the purpose of this Connect Groups, that we can come together, we can be an encouragement to one another, and we can walk together as a body. Amen. So I encourage you, make the time, come out, let us be together. And then on Friday, we're going to have our youth meeting here at 7 p.m. And uh, I will not reiterate everything that I'm saying, but let the youth come. Let them come and be together. If you're a youth and you have a neighbor who is a youth, just invite them. Say, you know what? I'm going for a church meeting. Would you like to come? Then ask mom and say, my friend wants to come. Can you take us to church or dad? Amen. So... And then we have our Sunday service, of course, on the Sunday at 9.30. Amen. And then before I end, um, can I please have the number on the screen? So we have that number there on the screen. And that number is very important to all of us because that is the only way we get to know what's happening in the church. So if you want to be able to be informed, to be in touch with what's going on, please jot that number down on your phone. Save it as Harvest Christian Church. Send a message on WhatsApp to that number with your name and surname, and we will add you to what we call a broadcast list. A broadcast list, when you receive the messages, you are the only one that receives those messages. So it's not going to be all the people that are here you're not going to be bombarded with messages. You will get the information that you need so that you can be in touch with what's going on. And then I'm going to call all the ladies that will be going to Zim for the ladies. Is it a convention or is it a conference? Convention. I never know the difference. So for the ladies convention, please come up. We would love to pray for you and pray with you, and just trust the Lord for a harvest as you travel. Amen. Ladies, all those who are going for the ladies' convention, please come up. And we need, to pray. we need to pray for the fathers that are remaining with the kids as well. They, they are going to need it. We, I, I think we're going to need those notepads to note what time the kids eat, what they wake up, where the clothes are, and all that. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for our mothers, our sisters, our wives, Lord, as they travel to Zimbabwe, Lord, for this convention. We pray for what you have for them, my Jesus. Lord, I just want to pray for their hearts, Lord, that, Lord, even as they travel together, Lord, I pray that you would keep their hearts pure, Lord, their hearts untainted, Lord, by anything and everything that will take place, Lord, as they travel. Because, Lord, the goal is for them to go and receive what you have for them, Lord. And, Lord, I pray that you would keep them. I pray, my Jesus, that as they go, Lord, you open their hearts. Lord, you put, Lord, an expectation in their hearts. An expectation, Lord, of your word for their lives, for what they need. Lord, I pray, my Jesus, that even as they go together, give them, Lord, moments of fellowship, Lord. Moments of sharing. Moments, Lord of being together, Lord, as sisters. My Lord, I pray that you grant them journey mercies as they travel, Lord. Lord, be with them. Encourage them, Lord, as they go. And in all their preparations, Lord, help them. In your name we pray this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen, church. Thank you. And uh, Children's Church, we... Ah, oh, there's no Children's Church this Sunday, Baba. Mm, they are here. So,
One, two. It's wonderful to be together and uh, just to encourage us that when the teachers are still marking the exam papers, we don't clap our hands, yeah? And the sister got up and said, you know, I hope the elders will confirm the things that I'm saying and then whether I'm right or wrong. And so we finished marking the paper. I think you can clap hands now. I think it's, I think that's sound doctrine. Eh? I, think that's, I think that's sound doctrine. Eh? <laughs> eh? And uh, it is, it is, it's funny, Richie, it's true. But this morning, you know, I woke up and somehow I had, I knew what the Lord wanted to bring, and so I had the body of what to bring. Does that make sense? Eh? But you know, Richie, I've never heard this. Eh? I had no opening statement. <laughs> Genuinely. And today, today is a good day to just copy and paste. Would you agree? Eh? <laughs> eh? It is a wonderful day to just copy and paste because, you know, it's so exciting. Uh, the, Lord, the way the Lord moves, the Lord moves us and we know he's speaking to us. Why? Because of the testimony we have amongst us. You know, what he brings with this brother, what he brings with this sister, what he brings in that situation. And we know that it is never about men, but it is to the glory of Jesus. Eh? To the glory of Jesus. And the only scripture I had to start with was, if the Lord came, that was his statement to the disciples, when I come, will I find faith? Hey? Will I find faith amongst you guys? Will I find faith? He was talking about this woman who saw that the only card that she had, the only hope that she had, the only source of answers and redemption that she had was in the judgment of the king. It was the only thing that she had. And she knew that if this guy does not help me, I'm finished. And that is why Jesus speaks to them and he says, this woman was persistent, he was persistent, persistent to the king to say, grant me, you know, grant me the, uh, you know, your verdict that I may, that I may be avenged, that my case may be, may be avenged. And the king says, oh, this woman is so much on my case. Because of her persistence, because of her persistence, I will grant her, you know, the desires of her heart. And Jesus asks and says, will I find such a faith, brothers and sisters? Will I find, using that medical analogy that we've just eh, <laughs> received, will I find people who have that understanding that without Jesus in front of us, eh, Without that Jesus in front of us, we can try to read about it, we can try to talk about it, we can go for all the conferences and try to develop this story about it, but unless we see, unless faith comes in our hearts to see that Jesus okay, has come to save us, to be that, what word did you use? Hey? <laughs> hey? Hey? That's who Jesus is, brothers and sisters. Eh? He wants to help us, not only help us, but he is, the Bible declares, the only way. Eh? The only way. There is no other way, there is no other plan, but how the Lord wants to help us. We even heard in the beginning of uh, the meeting through our brother, eh? behold, the Lord has things that are amazing for you and me. Behold. But may the Lord open our eyes eh, to see. May the Lord open our eyes to see who he is, who Jesus is, and not to be, I must be careful which word I use, and not to be like the rest of the world, where she used the word religious. Eh, where What is being religious? Religious is when I start to do things because they worked for my brother. 
religious is when I start doing things because, you know what, I once read about it, that's what it does. Religious is, that's what my grandfather did, that's what my mother does, that's what we will also do. Eh? But Jesus says here, no. Will I find people with faith? People who, in their individual capacity, they will be knocking, they will be trusting me, they will only have you know, their hope in me. And I say that religious word because we all know this is one of the most religious weekends okay, in the calendar of all our lives where everyone is talking about the death of this Jesus and whatever it means, whatever definition they have, but Jesus starts there and says, will I find faith? Will I find individuals, not churches, individuals that are behind, that know who Christ is in their lives? May the Lord help us eh, as we encourage one another as we continue eh, from that example, and we build on it, and I believe the Lord wants to encourage us this morning. Amen. Eh? And so, yes, I did say I had a body. And if you turn with me to the book of John, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. We'll read quite a few scriptures and we'll go slow through uh, some of these scriptures as we touch on some of these points. But it is the story of the death of Lazarus. We all know the story. We've all heard the story. But given even what the Lord has shared with us so far, I found it an interesting portion of scripture to talk about all the, some of the differences, some of the challenges that we all have as people as we face the reality of who Jesus really is in our lives. And I wanted to title this message uh, be having spirit-led faith. Allowing the Spirit of the Lord to open our eyes and that when our eyes are opened by the Spirit, our faith has got its roots on being led by the Spirit. Okay? Yeah. So that when I'm now following Jesus, okay? Jesus is now in front of me, and now when I'm talking about faith, it is faith which, before I start just taking faith from anywhere, it is first of all Jesus in front of me. And now he teaches me to have faith. And now I have faith in the things that you say. To say, no, don't worry about this one. I've got this one. And whatever it is that he brings to me, difficult, easy, not easy to receive, not easy to walk through, I know that for as long as he's in front of me, for as long as he is ahead of me, I am in a, face, in a safe place. Okay? And so this is how we're going to tackle it. Spirit-led faith. Amen? So let's get going. Eh? Now, verse, the first one. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and the sister, Martha. It is that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. I mean, let's just, let's start there. You come with me to the book of 26. You know, it's interesting how the way they describe Lazarus is it's, it's using this whole history of these sisters. You know, I mean, you know, this whole sister. So let's look at the history of the sisters in Matthew 26. It's interesting. Well, I found it interesting. <laughs> I found it interesting. In Matthew 26, uh, 26 we, there, there is a story of uh, Mary... In verse 7, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But the disciples saw it, and they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? This fragrant might have been sold 
for much and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of it, said, Why are you troubled by the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. Listen to number 12. For in pouring fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, this woman, what this woman has done, will also be told as a memorial for her. Eh? Will also be told as a memorial for her. Now they refer to, they start this passage of scripture with, uh, remember that Mary? Eh? And I read that, and some way I feel someone who was led by the Spirit. Eh? Someone who, I don't think she got there and just thought, you know, I mean, I've got this expensive perfume, I'll just, you know, I'll just, I'll just pour it on, you know, I'll just pour it on this guy's head. I, I, I don't, I, when I read that, when I put those two together, <laughs> I see someone who was deliberate. I see someone who, somewhere in the spirit, she was doing something. You know, she was very deliberate about the things that she was doing, if I can put it that way. Eh? And even in the Lord's uh, 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 comment, when he says, for the rest of her days, guys, what she has done, she has, this is for my burial. In other words, there was real significance in the things that she did. What did we see on the outside? We saw people wasting perfume. What did we see on the outside? We could have made money out of this perfume. Eh? What did we see on the outside? We did not see what someone saw in the spirit. We're talking about being led by the spirit, eh? spirit-led faith. That's what we're talking about. Where may the Lord help us and may the Lord give us that grace, each and every one of us, to be able to carry a faith that is, that we own, eh? that we own, but that is moved and started by his grace. We need to move fast because I found quite a few, <laughs> quite a few, quite a few of these comments. We move on with that story and uh, we, it's interesting also that we, they talk of Mary and Martha, but you will see how when it refers to Martha, it's one thing. When it refers to Mary, it's also another thing. Where the questions that, or the concerns that Martha had were not always the same as the comments or concerns that Mary had. Therefore the sisters sent for him, because they knew who he was, saying, Lord, behold, whom you love is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, now he's in front of his disciples, and he said, this sickness is not unto death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. That's a bold statement. Yeah? <laughs> that's, that's a bold statement. This sickness, so he's just received news. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified. Now, he's just thrown out a serious statement there. And people are there, people are listening to him. Now Jesus loved Martha and the sister Lazarus. Now Jesus loved Martha and the sister and Lazarus. So when he heard this, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples. Now, I don't know what that means, but, you know, he loved them so much that he stayed two more days. Eh? Can you, are you following that, uh, Richie? Eh? You know, if you love me that much, whenever I've watched uh, films, they go, I'll be there right now. You know, I'll, <laughs> everything stops and I'll be there right now. You know, and whenever there's an emergency, which is what I think this was, it warranted an emergency. Yeah. And the Lord saw it, saw the emergency, and, you know, he, and he was grieved by the emergency. He understood, the, you know, the depth of the emergency. And, uh, yeah, now we'll say two days, and we do what we need to do. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. Then his disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you want to go there again. <laughs> we are talking about 
the things that we face, we are reading through scripture, but for me when I go through all these things, we go through all the impediments, all the different challenges that you and me face, all the different excuses, all the different things that we say to ourselves, we say to other people, but all the things that we have to say except to say, Jesus, you are in control. Yeah. Hey? You are in control. And so with all these points, you see how there was always something that we brought as people. There was always a, no, Lord, <laughs> look at it this way. Lord, they sought to stone us. Why? If you read a few chapters back, you realize that the last time Jesus was in that area, <laughs> the guys called him out and they're asking him questions. They said, you know, I mean, you know, brother, the things that you're saying, we were listening to these things from the prophets and Abraham. Huh? Are, you saying, are you saying you're better than Abraham? And Jesus says to him, my brother, <laughs> before Abraham, I am. <laughs> that was a comment that he made a few. Uh, before Abraham was, I was. Eh? That's Matthew 20. Eh? That's, uh, that's, I think that's John 8. Eh? Before Abraham was, before Abraham, I was. And the guy just stopped him there and said, no, just give us some stones, guys. Just, let's just <laughs> give us some stones. Let's sort this matter here and now. And, and that was, so the disciples knew about, so that's what they're referring to here that there is just drama in Judea because of the things that you have said. Eh? And so we can see the guys were full of fear. We can see the guys were, you know, they were, they were not comfortable, but they were with Jesus. Eh? <laughs> they are with Jesus. The one man that stepped, we're going back to our example of uh, earlier on, eh? the one man, that's why I keep doing that. Uh, when I do that, I'm talking about Dave. Maybe you should stand... <laughs> Maybe you should stand here, Dave, so that, uh, hey, the, the one man that should always be in front and all of us listening, and we had all things to say, you know, about what he was doing. We can't do that, Lord. Eh? Where are we? Where are we stoning him? Eh? <clears throat> Verse 8. Then Jesus answered them and said, are there not 12 hours in a day? Uh, Jesus answers also. <laughs> huh? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. Hmm? Are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. In other words, walk in the spirit, my brother. Eh? Where there's a spirit, there's the light. <laughs> walk in the spirit. Where there's a spirit, there's the light. If anyone walks in the light, no, you won't stumble. <laughs> you won't stumble. If anyone walks in the light, you won't stumble. May the Lord help us. May the Lord open our eyes. May the Lord open, may help us. To gain understanding. You know, it's like random things that he put there because figurative, it doesn't make sense. Try to understand it. You know, I mean, you know, they, they've just thrown at him a real concern that we are going to be taken out if we go there. Because the last time we left there, it was not in good standing. And now you want us to go there. And he says to them, guys, walk in the light. There's 12 hours. Let's walk while there's still light. And you read that portion of scripture. And he's encouraging them, stay with me, stay with me. Why? May we be a people who are led all the days of our lives, led by the Spirit. And that our faith comes out of this leading okay, of the Spirit. <laughs> leading of the Spirit. If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if he walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Eh? But if you walk without Jesus in front of you, eh? as we heard in that example, what is the Lord seeing? Eh? You are exposed. You have got you to help. You have got only you to assist you. But that's not the heart of the Lord for us this morning. That's not the heart of the Lord. For, and this applies for all 
the situations, eh, the things that concern us in our lives. Eh, so that we are not talking about a Jesus who we raise our hands on a Sunday because we go to church. No, it's a Jesus who understands what's going on at the school. It's a Jesus who understands, who knows what's happening, you know, in the home with your husband. Hallelujah. Eh? <laughs> eh? He knows the things. I mean, he understands it. In any circumstance. And he pulls these things and we keep asking these questions. We keep asking these questions. These things he said after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And I won't uh, dwell on that, but we can just see how with each point, the Lord is, is building something. He's building something. He keeps, you know, he keeps encouraging him. He keeps explaining things. And a whole, a whole lot of things are happening as this story builds up. We take it to, to 20. Then Martha, well, I'll read from 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had been already in the tomb four days. Now he's arrived where, <laughs> where Lazarus is. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem and two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort uh, uh, them for their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. And I wanted to just go back to Mary again to say, you know, things are now happening. But good old Mary, I think somehow she's not moved by, t you know, she's moved. She's grieving her brother, yes. But she's not confused about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do. And I think Mary leaps out and says, you know, I'll just go and meet him at the border before he gets here because, you know, let's push him a bit to, him to, you know, to, to come a bit faster. But not Mary. But Mary... Yeah. Where are we? But Mary was sitting in the house. Now, and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you've been here, my brother would not have died. And even now, I know that whatever you ask God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. How clear can a statement be? <laughs> I mean, how clear is that statement? Eh? Your brother will rise again, Martha. All right. Then Martha said to him, <laughs> then Martha, I know, I know. I know that you rise again in the resurrection, you know, the last day. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about here, Lord, okay? That's what we're talking about here, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like funny, it's like funny, guys, but it is so you and me. <laughs> yeah. It is funny, but it is so you and me. <laughs> hey? Then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? <laughs> A second time. Do you believe this? Talking to Martha. Eh? So she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God who came into this world. But I mean, you can just see how the Lord is trying to paint this picture that, brothers and sisters, may religion be far from us. Eh? May religion not be our portion in our talking together, in our prayer meetings, in our connect groups, may religion not be something that is found in us. But may there be a reality of our interaction with the Lord, with the challenges that the Lord is giving us, versus our complete and utter submission to his lordship. We have sang today about how he's our Lord, how he's our, how, you know, he's everything to us. May we feel in one another eh, that as individuals, not as a church, as individuals, eh, this commitment towards what the Lord wants to do. Eh? 
Oh, may the Lord help us. Eh? May the Lord help us. Number 39. Eh? Number 38. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. And it was in a cave, and a stone lay against it. No, that's not where I am. Is that where I am? Hey? Okay. Yeah. Tw I'm at 20. Ah, okay. Yeah. 20? Okay. Ah, okay. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone lay against it. And he said, Take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, there's a stench, for he has been dead four days. The Lord has just spoken to Martha twice to say, this guy is going to leave Martha. Eh? Do you believe this, Martha? Uh, yes, Lord, I know. That's alive. Okay? No, Martha, if you believe, you, know, you will leave, Martha. Do you believe this? Yes, I do. Okay? Martha, roll out the stone. No, 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 no we can't do that, Lord. <laughs> eh? We can't do that, Lord. You know, we can't do that, Lord. That was Sister Martha. Uh, no, we can't do that. Then Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I have never seen this, this portion of scripture like this. You know, I've never seen myself. I've just, I've just seen a guy removing bandages off his face and, uh, you know, God is good. But to see the amount of drama around, just around the people. If I, I hope none of them told Lazarus about the faith that uh, this girl's had there, because <laughs> <laughs> Lazarus would have been a bad mo Martha, please, man. You could have made Jesus so upset he could have left. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey? I, I hope they never told uh, you know, Lazarus about Martha. <clears throat> eh? Did I not say? Did I not say, if you would believe, you would see the glory of the God? Okay. Then they took away the stone from that place where uh, the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, because, but because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that they may believe that you sent me. And now when Jesus had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. We know the story. And he who had died came out bound with the grave clothes and his face wrapped with the cloth. And Jesus said to, to them, Loose him and let him, let him go. That's the part of the story we all love. That's the part of the story we all know. But that was the story of what the Lord wanted to accomplish. Eh? When he started and said, no, guys, this story is going to make the Son of Man be glorified. So it's not a story of a miracle of uh, Lazarus healing, no. But it is a story for us to see our responsibility, our need uh, to see who Jesus is in our life, in every situation of life that we find ourselves in. Eh? That when we come, we see that, Lord, you are our Lord. You have got our number. Eh? You have got our number. Whether I'm struggling at home, struggling at work, struggling with any situation, but if I look to you, eh, and I am persistent, like that widow we started out with, like I'm persistent, persistent in wanting to receive what Jesus would have me do next, 
Because that's what the persistent lady was saying. The persistent lady knew that I have no other person to cry out to except to you. And we have no other person to bring our burdens, to cry out to, you know, other than Jesus. And that when he does, we may be encouraged as we read this portion of scripture to say, Lord, give us that heart where we are people of the spirit and we listen and we continue eh, in your ways. Isn't that, is that not, I, I don't know, I think it's simple. I know it's difficult, but I think it's simple. Eh? The gospel shared like that, you can see that it's simple, brothers and sisters. And may the Lord help us. I, I don't know, but for me, I read that and I thought, that is, that's, in, that's the full message, Richie. Eh? Is there anything else we need to uh, add to that? I mean, that's, <laughs> eh? is there anything else we might need to add to that? I think it's a full message. And I think we can bless the Lord, really, to see that in all things, brothers and sisters, he has asked us to see what he has done, and he keeps reminding and reminding. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Eh? And even this morning, I leave it at that. Do you believe? Eh? These, were his, these were his words. These were his very words. Eh? Let's just uh, end with his words. These were his words. Eh? I am the resurrection and the life. Those were his words. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this, <laughs> mother? And I leave that with you, and I leave that with myself as well. Do I believe in any situation, in any challenge, in anything that life throws at me, do I believe that the Lord will have, you know, will carry out what he needs to do for me? And that for me, my faith is in Jesus alone. That's what my faith is. My faith is in Jesus alone. Okay? And my brother, my sister, our faith in Jesus is hijacked by one thing. <laughs> that is, we are all prone to be right. We all want the easy way out. We all think we are right. We all know better. We all know better. Which is why I finish with that boring scripture that we always share every week and week out. Eh? This is why this flesh needs to go. This is why that message of the cross, this is why that message that Jesus left the people, deny yourself if anyone desires to come after me. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Eh? Let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. It is the only way to bring this guy called the flesh of men, my will, into that submission. Eh? Into that submission. And I believe that the Lord wants to help us with each day eh? that we may be a people more and more are quiet, are listening, eh? are following, are listening, are following. And I believe the Lord gave Mary that grace to be able to listen, to do things, to do things that were otherwise strange to other people. We were talking about foolish things, foolish things. She did a foolish thing. How do you throw a kali star of expensive perfume? When I go into the shops and I look at some of the prices of expensive perfume for women, yeah, I can, if I make that calculation, I mean, that is, whoa, eh? And she breaks it. That's a bit foolish, I would say, to a normal person. But I tell you, for those who walk in the spirit, eh, they will know what to do. And for us, this is the encouragement, brothers and sisters, to walk in the spirit. And so I don't know what your situation is, but I pray this morning eh, that we may be a people who, not religious, we spoke about religion. No, it won't help us. It won't help us. It will only bring us to questions. Eh? We do this at home, but why do you do that? Why do you drink before you eat? Why do you wash before you? Why? Uh, we, we waste our lives in debates. 
No, there were no debates. The Lord just said to them, believe. Brothers and sisters, let us be a people who see who Jesus is and believe. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. So let's stand this morning. I don't know what believe song we're going to have uh, this morning, brother. But for me, I tell you, may the Lord help us, all of us. This applies to all of us. Eh? Let us be a people who are trusting for the Lord to help us. Eh? For the people, for the Lord to help us. Eh? And I believe the Lord will be faithful. Will be faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your word this morning. Lord, I thank you for your heart for us as your people this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have died for us. Thank you, Lord, that you have paid the ultimate price for us. But, Father, we pray this morning, Lord. We pray this morning, Lord, that, Father, help us to see who you are. Who you are, Lord, the author, the finisher of our faith, the one who has paid the ultimate price for everything that concerns me is Brighton, the sinner. Without you, Lord, in front, Lord, I am exposed, exposed to all the elements, exposed to the wrath of the Lord's judgment. But, Lord, how you have loved each and every one of us. And I pray this morning, Lord, that you may minister to us, that you may encourage us, that you may make us a people, Lord, who want to serve you more and more. And I pray, Lord Jesus, this morning, Lord, as we sing, bring faith in our hearts, Lord. Bring faith in our hearts, Lord, that comes from being led by your Spirit, that comes by being led by the things that you bring to us. And I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Standing in our midst, standing in 
enemies here with the power to heal with the power to heal and the grace to forgive and I believe I believe in me I believe that he's here standing in our midst standing in our midst here with the power to heal with the power to heal and the grace to forgive 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 the Lord is here now the Lord is here now and these are the words that we say to you that has never come to the knowledge of who Jesus is for your life. Hey? To you who, when you look in the mirror, you cannot say, today, if you died, you will go to heaven. Hey? There are people like that. To you, <laughs> this is the grace that is here for you. He is here now to make sure that today when you walk through that door, <laughs> you can sing. We can all sing this song together. I believe he came, he rose again, that we read as we started this meeting, this meeting, in case you were not here. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. That's not on you, that's on those who have received the saving grace of Christ. Eh? And we read all these things, beloved, eh? and everyone who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure. And that there's no way you can purify yourself if you don't know Christ. How? How? It's not possible. It is only possible when he is in front. Eh? And he gives me the grace and as I follow and as I listen, I'm able to be cleansed. It's, I don't clean myself, he cleanses me. I don't clean myself, he cleanses us. I don't know if that is confusing. Is that confusing, Gomes? Eh? But it's an invitation to those who want to receive Christ. To say, you know, I know I don't have Christ in my life. And if that's you, my brother, my sister... Don't be ashamed. We are certainly not, not me wanting to embarrass you. But it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing how the Lord has died that everlasting life is your portion. And this morning, that grace is there. And so as the brothers continue to sing, perhaps that's you. I want to give you that opportunity. It's not complicated at all. You just come out of your seats. You come, and we can pray together this morning, and we can trust the Lord. And you can say, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Eh? I need this grace which is here this morning. That's why we sing, he's here now. I don't know if he'll be there at home when you get home. I don't know if he'll be there to, in the evening. I don't know if he'll be here. <laughs> but now, he's here now. And while he's here, I want to invite you. If that is you, and you know you want this, come. And we are going to pray together, and we're going to trust the Lord together. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come, brothers. I surrender all to you. Everything, everything. Oh, 
this morning who you you once believed in Jesus he was standing in front of you but somehow through circumstances of this world you have replaced him with things maybe you think that your money can buy you that righteousness that God is looking for or your job or your family or other things in this world have replaced the Jesus in front of you. Or you have decided to walk away from that road of the cross. But I believe that we cannot leave this place until we have given an opportunity. If that is you this morning and your heart's desire is to come back to that place where Jesus is in front of you, where God sees the righteousness of Jesus and not your sin. The Lord is faithful. His presence is here to heal you today, to restore you back to that right place on that road of the cross behind Jesus and what He has done for you. So as we sing this song, if that is you, come forward. Render your heart before the Lord. You will never be the same again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all to you. Everything, everything I give to you. I surrender, I surrender. Away. Hey, I 
give myself away so you can use me. Um, so I just have a little um, something to say. Um, a lot of the time, um, back in the day when I was younger, I used to think that um, whenever I came into the presence of the Lord, after maybe I had a bad day or maybe I've walked away, that I, sometimes I felt like I wasn't good enough to come into the presence of the Lord, that I wasn't good enough to, you know, come to Him. And it's true, we're never going to be good enough. We're never going to deserve the love um, that He gives us, the forgiveness that He gives us. But it's grace. He gives, it to, he gives it to us because He loves us. There's nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing that we can do to deserve it. But He gives us to us freely. It's a gift. We don't, we don't work for it, you know? And um, if you feel like you're not good enough, that the sin is stopping you, that you walking away is you know, stopping you from coming to the Lord, He's there for you, and He will always look past your sin, but look at your heart and what you want, your desire to come to Him, your desire to live for Him. I think this morning as we continue to worship the Lord, we can just wait a bit in the presence of the Lord. Don't be disheartened as we continue, but open your heart in the presence of the Lord and let's allow the Lord to do what He wants to do in our midst this morning. And I just want to share this with all of us. I know we know the story of the parable of the sower, but I'm just going to read it again this morning. It says, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up, and because they had no depth of earth, but when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And Jesus says, he who has an ear, let him hear. And this morning, you know, as I was standing here, this came into my heart over and over again. And this morning, I just feel the Lord wants to speak to a group of people. And those group of people is what the servant refers to. And it says, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. And as we go, you will see that in verse 20, he says, but he who received seed on the stony places, yada, yada, now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he becomes unfruitful. And I feel that there are some people who are struggling with their faith. And they are struggling with their faith not because they are not born again. Not because they do not believe in Jesus. But because we, you have come to this place where you have heard, you know. But as verse 22 says, but because of the cares of this world. Because of the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. It says that it comes and it chokes the word and you become unfruitful. And it's not because the Lord doesn't want to do work in your life. It's not because the Lord does not want to use you. But it's because you are in the situation where you are burdened with the cares of the world. Where somehow your desire to be well in this life outweighs your desire for the things of the Spirit. And you find yourself stuck. And I feel the Lord wants to speak to this group of people in this morning. He wants to bring freedom. 
But at the same time, he is bringing a challenge where you're standing. To say, I'm speaking to you this morning because I love you. If I did not, I would not even bring this up. But beware. If you did not know why you feel like when you pray, your, you know, it's like your prayers are hitting brass. It's like you want to serve the Lord, but you're trying to move in mud. You know, your feet will not even lift up. And the Lord says, this is why. And as we worship the Lord, bring your heart. As we worship the Lord, cry out to the Lord. And if you need prayer, you can come to the front. We can stand with you. We can trust the Lord. But only if you are sure you want to take that step. Not because you are emotionally moved. Not because you know that is you. But because only you know you want to take that step. If you want to take that step, you can come. We'll trust the Lord together. Because once the Lord does the work, you need to move. If you are not sure, please do not come. But if you are sure that I want to take the step for the Lord, come and we'll trust the Lord together. Amen. We can worship the Lord and if that is you, feel free to come. Amen. I desire to be a vessel of honor holy and pure devoted to you i desire to be the vessel of honor holy devoted to you i desire i desire to be a vessel of honor Holy and pure, devoted to you, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy devoted to you, like clay, like clay in the potter's hands, mold me. For me, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy devoted to you. Oh, like clay, like clay in the potter's hands, mold me, like clay in the potter's hands. For me, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy devoted to you. I desire, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy and pure. Devoted to you, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy devoted to you, who oh, like clay, like clay in the potter's hand for me, like clay in the potter's hand. For me, I desire to be a vessel of honor, holy devoted to you. Hallelujah. Holy devoted to you. Oh, holy devoted to you like the fire in my heart let me see you once again like the fire like the fire in my heart 
Let me see you once again. Forgive me, forgive me, Lord, for the wasted years. Ignite my heart again. Light the fire in my heart today, today. Sing like the fire today, like the fire in my heart. Let me see you once again, like the fire, like the fire in my heart. Let me see you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, for the wasted years. Ignite my heart again. Light the fire in my heart today. Some news uh, about our brother Levi and his family. He sent us some news for those I know we've been praying, we trust in the Lord that uh, they had results from uh, uh, his mom who was in hospital, and the results were very, they were not bad. Let me put it that way. Eh? And, uh, and they are really looking forward to a full recovery from mom. She still has to go through a few more things in hospital, but at least the results were not as bad as uh, everyone thought they would be. And so we continue to trust the Lord for them and to pray for them as a family. So, amen. 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 so Father, we are so grateful today for this time that we've had in your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have spoken so clearly. Your word has come so clearly about us having faith in our hearts, Lord about your son dying for us, Lord, to make a way for us to be able to come into your presence. So, Lord, I just pray that as we go for the rest of the weekend, Lord, and for the rest of the week and for the time ahead, Lord, that these are seeds, exactly like we've heard, the sower, these are seeds that have been sown into our hearts, Lord. And that fertile ground, Lord, we receive and the seed grows up and it brings forth fruit. And your word is spoken about the fruit. The fruit of your presence, Lord. The fruit of your grace in our lives, Lord. So I pray for us as a people, Lord, that our hearts will be fertile to receive this word. And you, you have blessed us, Lord. And we are so grateful today. Lord. And we bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Oh, homo na, ti ta ta, homo na.